Hi there, this is Sampath Ram. Hope you are doing well. Today I am going to be recording another video after my first garden video. It's been about a month that I've been growing these plants, and I'm really excited to show you what I've gone through and what I've seen, and what I've done till now. So let's get started. Firstly, this is the toughest plant to grow, the curry leaf plant, and I have realized that it this grows pretty well indoors, and so I have kept it inside. Make sure that the soil is always moist. I don't overwater it or underwater it. Just make keep the soil moist, and that's all it needs to grow properly. And so, let's move on to the next. So with the pomegranate, it's still growing pretty good. All the fruits that we saw in the previous video, they are turning. They're turning a little bigger. I think I'll still continue to water them like uh, about once or twice a week. Then all the the marigolds are growing pretty well as well. And I got this maize somehow, probably through the soil that I bought in the Home Depot uh, when I was planting it. And then we have the tomato plants that are yielding into real tomatoes. Wow, look at that. And each of them has at least one of them right now. And I was thinking of pollinating them through the hand. Uh, as I read online that not all flowers yield to fruits. And we have to hand pollinate or have bees do the same. Uh, what I meant by pollination is, so every flower, every flower in the world, most of them have pollen in the flower which needs to go way inside the stigma to convert into a fruit. So we can do it uh, in two ways. One is natural, which is through, which is done by honeybees, or through like, the air that moves through the, through the plant, which will shake the pollen to go back to the stigma. Or uh, you can do it artificially through using like a vibrating toothbrush, just place it near each of the flower and See the magic um, but I like the honey bees part like they are natural habitat and they do the pollination for us if we have if you don't have them then I would recommend using a hand toothbrush like the vibrating toothbrush uh, to have it vibrated for all of the flowers that you have alrighty now let's move on to the next one so the date palm is still not growing I still have some hope because I could see that it still has some green stuff on the bottom. So I'll still continue to water it and I, I hope and I hope that it will come back alive. And um, I got these little clams, little clams from like the dollar store. Like we got three of them, three clams uh, for, for a dollar along with the screws. So it's pretty cool, isn't it? I learned this through my friend. Who also recently bought a house and started doing gardening and I had another avocado plant here and it apparently didn't have enough nutrition or it got a shock while transferring over here and so it didn't it didn't come back alive so I removed it and the, the smaller one still continued to grow uh, yep and here we have the blueberry plants it yielded in a few few blueberries and then I believe it's still growing and then we have the watermelon it grew pretty big it was like real small when I when I had planted it <coughs> excuse me let me show you some of the watermelon fruits where is it okay, here there you go that's watermelon there are like so many watermelons each of the flower again is a fruit if you observe, you can see there's just plenty. I need to research how I can grow this vertically. Probably put like a stack of wood and have these tie around it and grow like that. But so far, it's okay. I may need to protect these watermelons as they grow bigger. 
and then we have some of the maize too popped up <laughs> okay now moving on we have this i believe honey flowers or not sure it really attracted a lot of honey bees i believe i, I forgot to show you here is the beehive i happen to have and i was so happy to see them as you can see right over here there's a bees they're amazing creatures helping us uh, pollinate the flowers to turn everything into fruits okay uh, after these flowers which has a lot of honey let's move on to the squash I planted about what one two three four five squashes all of them are yielding fruit already as you can see this is the yellow squash it's going pretty well it's pretty thick too and here's the normal squash uh, where are the fruits let me see it's bottom yeah right here still growing and I believe a lot more on the other side of this plant and it is yellow squash again a lot of flowers and one fruit here for the same plant so we covered three of them already and here is the biggest plant so far and it has got a squash going pretty big and healthy Pretty big and healthy, and on this side too, as you can see. No wonder this is this guy is feeling thirsty pretty quick. It's growing a lot of fruit, right? All the water is getting converted into fruit. Okay, and then we have yellow squash here. That is also pretty healthy. So there was one rotten uh, squash which was very thin. I removed it and. Just left it somewhere over here, which will automatically decompose. And then the marigolds are still doing great. All of them, some of them, like this one, I didn't have uh, enough soil for the roots, and so I just loosened it a little bit using that hand tool. And let's see, I'm sure it will grow back pretty quick. These are good, and the marigold, that is good. And these are corn. See how big they grow. It's amazing, isn't it? I used to water like every day. Every day. Around the evening time. The marigold is also good. Awesome. The corn is still doing great. Okay. And I recently planted these flowers, not flowers, sorry, uh, the berries, raspberry. If you have noticed, I've kept all of the leaves crushed into pieces and I covered it on top of the soil. That way the moisture won't evaporate quickly and I don't have to water it often. Again, another trick learned the reading online and through from prints. This is what blueberry. I believe this is another blueberry that we have. Yes, it's blueberry. I have got little rose plants, like tiny little roses. Very cute, adorable. This is yellow. And this is white. White with pink in the middle. This is white. And this is the rose. And moving on. Uh, this one, I believe it is blackberry. And this is blackberry. I didn't want to throw this sticker, and so I just taped it onto the stick. That way, I can easily identify plants. This is hello, hello bell pepper. Recently planted again, like two days ago. This is normal bell pepper and the marigold and I still don't know what these plants are. If you have noticed in the previous video, there were tiny little ones and I wanted to see how big they grow and 
based on the fruit I can recognize. I am not still sure what exactly is this plant, but it's still still doing pretty good, and I don't want to cut it. It's really healthy. The, all of these three plants right here, one, two, three, all of them are doing great. I believe this is cantaloupe. Let's see. I have got some jalapenos. Woohoo! There you go. Sorry for the shaky video. I'm just doing it with one hand. All right, that's jalapeno. They're going pretty good. I didn't cut them yet. I did the same hand pollination method. But since we got the bees, I'll still continue to do both. Let them also do their job of taking honey out. And these two are still growing. None of those uh, flowers didn't yield to peppers yet. We have a strawberry here and a marigold and the marigold. What else do we have here? We have basil that is just planted in a pot and kept it here. And then the last plant of the backyard is fig. Look at this. I have a fruit growing is very little when I just bought it and now look how big it is it's not so tall but still it, it is yielding fruit and I'm happy uh, I'm again putting the ground cover with the, with the leaves and then wait I forgot this guy this groundnut so I just digged a hole and kept all the trash, uh, no, not trash, sorry, uh, vegetable, vegetables and some onions and stuff. And somehow this happened to be, they happened to be a groundnut and it grew to a plant. I didn't even know. And despite of this concrete, it still grew. Wow. And then coming to the non-plants. I had some roses here that still didn't grow from the branch. I had chopped it and uh, pasted turmeric around, turmeric paste around and pl uh, planted in the soil. They still didn't yield to any green leaves, but I still see that the, the, the branch is still green. So I believe there is life and I hope that they are going to recover. I still have hope. I'll continue to water them. And then here are the custom wind chimes. If I were to buy this much tall wind chimes, it would cost me about $450. But I, I got this done through another person who I met. Uh, and it sounds great. And it costed me $150. Let me know if you want one. And I could get it done for you. And I, or I'll connect you with that person. It sounds great. It's beautiful too. She made it with so much care and attention. Look how beautiful it is. We have got beads, a lot of decoration, and a beautiful star on the bottom. And it still resonates. I hanged it to the tree because I didn't have a strong enough ceiling to hold it. Because I have a metal roof, I didn't know where to hang it, so I hanged it to the tree. And here I have another small wind chimes. Together with the big one, it sounds beautiful on a windy day. That's all guys, that's all I have for today. If you guys have any questions, or comments or suggestions please comment below and I would be happy to answer if I know and thank you again for watching hit that subscribe button and tap on the bell icon to get the notifications for future videos that I'm gonna make thank you so much for watching and have a great day bye